First interesting hand of the day happens about 25 minutes into my session. I have two red jacks from the plus one position, open for a raise to 15. Get called by the small blind and the big blind player. Three of us are going to head off to a flop with 45 in. Flop comes out, ace, four, three, all diamonds. Not a great flop for a pair of jacks, uh, but I do have a flush draw. Question is, is flush draw any good? Player small blind leads out quickly for 15. The big blind puts in a call and for $15, I'm gonna take one off here. Turn card comes as a four of spades. Shouldn't really change too much. Small blind now leads again for $50. Big blind thinks for a moment and makes the call. I think at this point, it's a little too optimistic for me to make the call. Trying to draw to a flush that might be no good or Maybe I can catch a jack. Well, it's the first hand I'm playing, so let's put in a very, very loose call for $50, and we see a nine of hearts on the river. We basically brick out. Someone definitely has an ace. Maybe someone even has a flush. I'm dead here. First player now bets out for $80. Hmm, looks like he still likes his hand. I'm guessing that he has at least an ace. Maybe he has a flush. Next player decides to put in a raise and he makes it $180. Of course, my hand is shriveled up. It should have been tossed in the muck on the turn, but uh, I toss it now. I keep the camera rolling just to see how this would turn out. I'm thinking that maybe the player in the big blind has a hand like ace four or three, four, he's been playing extremely wild since he's been at the table. And I seen him jam all in with a straight when there's a four flush on the board. So anything's possible. Player at the end of the table, well, he's a little bit more solid. He finally, after a long tank, makes the call just to find out that he's beaten by King Deuce of Diamonds. All right, so we're not off to a great start. We probably lost more than we should have. Here I decided to open with Jack-8 suited from the low jack, get a couple callers, and then it comes around to a player at the other end of the table who's a very solid reg, and he decides to put on the old squeeze. This time he makes it to $115. I would say this player is one of the strongest players in the room, and he's definitely tough competition. But I have noticed that he's been utilizing the squeeze uh, probably at a higher rate than one would consider normal. And he's been getting away with it. No one has been fighting back. And therefore, why would he stop? I mean, if it works, don't fix it, right? So knowing all this, I'm thinking he's probably doing this a little bit lighter than he would normally do it in a tougher game. And therefore, I decided to float and put in the call. Now, this is not something I would recommend people to do, but in this particular spot, in this particular day, I think this will work. The type of hands I would flat with normally would be ace-king, ace-queen, medium-sized pocket pairs, stuff that you don't want to get all in when you're super deep, and then occasionally stuff like eight-seven suited, seven-six suited. This time the flop comes king-high, and my opponent decides to check. That's all the green light I would need. I'm going to represent like I have an ace-king type of hand, which is definitely in my range, and I bet out for $100, and he quickly folds. All right, this time we actually have ace-king. We're on the button, good position. There is one limper. We decide to raise to $20. Both the blinds call, and uh, so does the limper. So we're going to head off to this flop, four ways with $80 in the center. Well, looking for a good flop and uh, we instead get nine, four, deuce, rainbow. Not the greatest flop. It's checked around to me. I'm not going to go for this. I'm just going to check this one back. Take a free card. Free card's good. It's a king of hearts. It's checked to me. I'm going to bet now. Make it 50. Everyone folds. So just because you have ace-king doesn't mean you have to continuation bet on a, on a flop, especially against multiple players. All right, this next hand is really interesting. There is an open for $10. One player calls. I look down at two tens from the big blind. I squeeze to 45, and only the opener puts in the call. 
The two of us head off to a flop, which comes out queen nine nine. Not the greatest flop for pocket tens. Of course, there's an overcard, and if someone has a nine, that's dangerous. But I decided to lead for forty dollars. I think this board hits me more than it hits my opponent. But my opponent disagrees, and he announces all in. Of course, my first reaction is, oops, I stepped into it. Looks like I'm beat. Let's just get rid of this piece of cheese and uh, move on to the next hand. But then you got to think, would you really do this with a nine? Would you really do this with a hand like ace-queen or king-queen? I doubt it. I don't think he would do that. I think he would like to get, you know, more chips and less trying to chase me out of the pot. So I asked for a count and uh, he counts out his chips. And basically what I'm looking for is how comfortable he is and whether he feels like he is, has a, a lot of confidence in doing so. And his body language and the way he's acting makes me feel like he's not comfortable at all and that this is some sort of bluff. Hands that he could be bluffing with, uh, ace-king perhaps, jack-10 perhaps, ace-jack, maybe some sort of uh, smaller pair. So I think it's a bluff, and I'm going to make a, uh, a big call here and uh, see if I'm right. I'm going to go with my read. Turn cards a deuce, river cards a deuce, doesn't change anything. And my opponent turns over the only hand that um, makes sense that he could beat me with. Pocket jacks. So I think my read was good, that he was turning his hand into a bluff. I think the outcome was not so great. But I'm happy with my read. I'm happy with the call. Just not happy on the outcome. Things haven't been going my way so far today. Maybe I can change it with pair of sixes from the button. There was a $6 straddle, bunch of limpers. I just decided to lip along. And we get to see a flop that comes out queen seven three with two hearts. Not much here for me, but when everyone checks, I decided I might be able to represent a queen. We'll bet it out. Maybe they all fold. So I put in $30. I end up getting two collars for the $30. Uh, one from someone who is very loose and calls off a lot. And the other one from a very good player who I'm concerned with could have a flush draw. Turn card comes as a five of clubs. They both check to me. I picked up additional equity, but I'm going to be cautious and just check this one back. And miracles have it, I catch a four on the river to make a straight. Unfortunately, it is the four of hearts, which also completes the flush. Ah, first two players both end up checking to me. And here I'm going to go for a small sizing. Uh, basically, I want to get called by all those top pairs, maybe two pairs. And if someone comes over the top of the flush, I can just dump it with a minimum loss. I get one caller. I turn it over. He is not happy, but we win it. The very next hand, player has a $6 straddle. One player limps in for the six. I decide to raise to 25 with ace nine of spades from the cutoff. End up getting three callers. So we're going to head off to this flop four ways with $103 in the main. Flop comes out, well, it's a dream flop. Comes nine, nine, eight, rainbow. Great flop for ace nine. It's checked around to me. I'm not going to slow down. I'm going to keep the pedal to the metal and bid out for $50. If they have some sort of straight draw or maybe an eight, I figure they'll come along. Maybe someone will make a move on me thinking I'm probably doing this with ace king or ace queen. I do get one caller to the, from the player on my right. And the two of us are going to head off to a turn card, which is another beautiful card. It is the eight of spades. So... Hopefully my opponent has an eight and is trying to trap me, which would be wonderful. He checks. I put out a smaller size bet because I probably put out a smaller size bet if I had something like an overpair at this point. And I'm hoping and giving him the chance to check raise me and try to make a move and get me off my hand. But he does put in the call. Now he only has about $150 left in front of him. 
and we see a blank four of spades on the river. He checks again. Well, I think there's only one bet size that makes sense. So I put them all in for about $150 and he tanks for a long time. Now, I'm not quite sure what he's thinking about at this point. If he had a hand like Jack-10 or some sort of straight draw, I think he would probably just muck this, thinking I might have an ace high. And if he had an eight, he wouldn't think about it at all. So what could he have? I'm not really sure. Anyway, he does end up folding, and we end up winning this one. There's a six dollar straddle. Player from the cutoff opens for 15. I call with nine eight suited. Now the straddler decides to make it sixty dollars. Uh, he's a pretty good player. A little bit concerned. So is the player in the cutoff. They put in the call. I decide to put in the call, and we're going three ways to a flop with one hundred eighty one dollars in the center. Flop comes out eight high with two clubs, eight four deuce. I check it. It does get checked around. Turn card comes as a four of clubs, not the greatest card in the world. I check it. It gets checked over to the player in the cutoff and they make a bet for $30. Seems like it's a, like a probing size bet. Not really sure what this means, but I'm concerned that the player behind me has a flush draw. So I'm going to put in a raise trying to protect my top pair. It may look like I have a flush and maybe I can get a better hand to fold. My opponent decides to call the 100, and once he does, I'm pretty sure he has either the ace of clubs or the king of clubs in his hand, just looking for a blank, and we get the nine of hearts. Great card. I check it to him, see if he wants to bluff with it. He doesn't. I roll it over. He kind of flashes that he had the ace king with the ace of clubs. Again, there's a $6 straddle on this hand. We get a bunch of limpers, so I limp along from the button with a pair of fours. Just looking to set mine, hopefully flop something good. Dealer puts out the flop, and it comes 654 rainbow. Really good flop for a set of fours, except uh, someone might have some sort of straight or straight draw. First player checks, next player bets out for $15. The other players end up folding here. I'm going to put in a raise, I'm not going to slow play this thing. I make it 45. Everyone else folds out except for the initial better who thinks for a moment and then puts in the call. Most likely they have some sort of draw, maybe a pair in a straight draw, like 6-7, six, 5-7, seven, seven, something like that. Turn card comes, it's not a great one, it's the deuce of diamonds. So it does put up a one-liner to the straight, but it's to the bottom end, and since he led out, I'd really taken away a lot of his threes that would be in his range. He checks it over. I'm going to bet small, just trying to get some value. Uh, I think a big bet will chase off all those hands that would be afraid of a straight. He doesn't think too long before putting in the call for the $60. So we're going to see a river card. Hopefully it's a blank or maybe something that pairs the board. River card comes as the ace of spades, basically a blank. If he has something like ace six, he might be uh, willing to call a bigger bet. He checks again. I'm going to go about one third pot, trying to get a crying call from someone with a six, maybe two pair. He tanks for a little bit before finally saying, oh, if you got it, you got it. And he puts in the call. I turn over my hand, expecting it to be the winner, and he rolls over King Three of Diamonds. Ah, didn't see that one coming. There's a six dollar straddle from a player who's a very sticky player. I got Queen Ten offsuit on the button. It's folded to me. I make it thirty five dollars, just trying to take down the the blinds. And if he happens to call, then I'll at least I'll have position on him. After some thought, he decides to make the call, and we see a flop that comes out. King 9-5 with two hearts. I do have the queen of hearts. I got a gutter to a jack for the straight. He checks over to me. I'm going to continue $30. He doesn't think too long before making the call. So it looks like uh, he has a little, little bit of something. Dealer puts out the turn card, and it is the three of clubs. We were hoping for a jack, but... Uh, Oh well, can't always get what you want. He checks again. 
As I said, I think he's pretty sticky. If he has like a king, he's definitely going to call. If he has a nine, I think he might call. If he has a five or a three, I can probably get him to fold. If he has a flush draw, it's probably going to be smaller than uh, my queen high. I don't think he has an ace high flush draw. So I might have him out pipped with no pair. And I could probably get him to fold maybe nines and fives, which have me beat. So all in all, I think that's a pretty good gamble to do. So $100 into the center. Let's see if he has the cojones to uh, put in the call. After some time, he says, I don't think my five's any good. And he mucks it. So we win this one with a bluff. One player limps in front of me. I got 8-7 suited. I decided to put in a raise to $15. I get a couple callers. One from the low jack uh, to my left. Also from the cutoff and the button. And then the small blind who has a short stack decides to jam all in for $140. Yeah, I can't be calling this for $140. Uh, I posture for a bit, making it look like I might have a decision, but basically I am folding. The low jack ends up putting in the call and everyone else folds out, so these two players are going to get to see a run out. Well, the flop comes out queen high with two clubs, so I would have had a flush draw. Turn card was an ace. River card comes as a complete blank. Person shows over ace, queen for top two pair. Of course, I would have flopped a flush draw and um, probably lost some money on that one. So sometimes when you get raised out of a pot, it's a good thing. It saves you some money. Other time, it sucks. There's a $6 straddle. Player opens for 16 Get a couple collars. I got 10 6 of diamonds. That's 40% of a straight flush. So I put in the call from the big blind. And we see a flop that comes out ace, queen, six with two spades and one diamond. Not the greatest flop. I check it. It gets checked all the way around to the player on the button who decides to put out a small bet of $40. Now, I got a pair. I got a backdoor straight draw, backdoor flush draw, and I kind of have a read that this player might be on a, a flush draw. So I put in the call. I was thinking maybe I should go for a check raise, but I thought that would be a little bit too optimistic, you might say. Uh, the initial raiser also puts in the call. He doesn't seem too happy with his hand though, so I'm not too worried about him. Turn card comes as the ten of clubs. We make two pair. I decide to check it. It gets checked around to the player on the button again. I thought he would check back a flush draw, and instead he bets small for $45. I think he probably has like a weak ace now. Or maybe a pair in a flush draw. Anyway, I think I'm supposed to check raise here, but I played this very passively and just put in the call, which gave the other opponent an excellent price to draw to whatever he's drawing at. I don't mind the call on the flop, but when you turn two pair in that situation, you really have to put a check raise in. I mean, if you think the guy has a flush draw, unless he has king jack of spades or queen ten of spades, you're ahead. You gotta charge him to draw to his flush. You need to check raise that turn. Of course, I instantly re regret my decision when the other player decides to put in the call for the 45, and I'm saying to myself, why are you giving this guy a cheap price to draw to beat you? River card comes as three clubs, complete blank. I should probably bet small here, but instead I decided to check. It gets checked around. I show my two pair it's by far the best, and I really screwed up this hand. I'm starting to get a little tired, and I can tell that my aggression level is not what it needs to be to be competitive at this table. So it's time to pack it up and to head on home. So today didn't go as smoothly as some of the other days I've gone in the past. End up uh, getting stuck, getting even, getting stuck, getting even, and then a small winner. I really hate the way I played that last hand. It was uh, pretty pitiful. Supposed to definitely check raise on that turn and then uh, bet on that river. I, I missed both of them. Cost me a lot of value and uh, would have had a nicer win if I would have done so. 
Anyway, I appreciate you guys watching, and thanks for all your support. And just a reminder that I am going to be heading to Austin, Texas. I'm hoping to find some space on a live stream, but if not, I'll just uh, be out there grinding and uh, hopefully get to meet some of those people from the Texas area and uh, have a good time. Well, until next time, good luck at the tables, and we'll see you back here soon.